Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you game 2 of a best of 3 between ZZ and Presta John in the playoffs of season 2 of the Steel Division League. In this one they are playing on Slutsk West and both players have decided to play on the Axis side this time around. And more than that they both decided to play with the 5th SS Panzer also known as the Viking Division. Both of them have the balanced deployment type, so we're in for an extreme mirror match here between the two players. What that means is it's really going to come down to tactics and where each player really decides to commit their troops. Anyway, ZZ is going to be playing on the left hand side and Prester John on the right. Uh, so ZZ red, Prester John blue. And let's have a little talk about the 5th SS Panzer. So, it's a very standard Axis division. It has an abundance of Panthers, so if you like the Panther tank, you're in the right place. But they do have a, a reasonable recon tab. It's not something that's probably going to be used much in a 1v1 scenario, but they do have the lovely Panther 3s that I really enjoy using because of their extreme accuracy at range. And they gain access to some captured T-3485s, which are nice to use early on for some cheap heavy armor presence, uh, but after that we'll probably just see a lot of Panthers. The support tab is okay, but it's a bit lackluster in the 5th SS. Uh, then we have the anti-tank tab, which is where the 5th SS can really shine. But I'm not sure how it's going to work in a mi mirror match, because they gain access to a lot of Jagd Panthers. And the Jagd Panthers can be nice, for sure, but they have lower penetration than they do armor. So if they come up against each other, uh, they're just going to be bouncing off each other for days, which will be quite interesting to watch. Uh, either way, in the anti-air tab, nothing new there. Uh, just the SDK Z71s and the Flak 43s, if you choose to take those, of course. And then you've got the artillery tab, which has a, actually a quite nice mix of units. I very much uh, like to use the self-propelled weapons that the 5th SS can get, including the Hummels in the late game, and maybe we'll see them come out to play, especially with them both playing balanced. In the air tab, it's all about the Fokkerwolves, and especially the Panzerblitz uh, rocket Fokkerwolves that are going to be really crucial to watch as to how they're utilized in taking out the opponent's armor. So yeah, the Panzerblitz certainly going to come out to play, I'm sure. Right, let's have a look at some of the units going down. On the right-hand side here, we have Presta John, going to be using a T-3485 at the top of the map, going to be following that up by two Panzer Grenadiers and the Pioneer Führer at the start of the game. Also got a Pack 38 there. Further down, the Flammenwerfer heading towards the center. I reckon that's probably just going to zoom up, maybe sit on the edge of this tree line just so that he can capture the flag in the open. Further down, uh, we see Sturm Pioneers. It's going to be three units of Sturm Pioneers backed up by four units of Flammenwerfer. Pioneer Führer, Pack 38. You wouldn't want to get close to this bunch of infantry, that's for sure. That's a lot of close range infantry, uh, with a commander coming out at the start. On the bottom side, we see the Aufklarer Panther D being used, and the Sturm Pioneer and Flammenwerfer to follow up. On the side of ZZ, on the bottom side, we've got Pioneers, but these ones are coming in half tracks. Uh, two Panzer Grenadiers without half tracks, Panzer Vernichtungs, these are the six man squads with uh, Panzer Strex, and we've got the Battery Führer there, which is the artillery commander. Or uh, leader, sorry, not commander. Two MG42s. As easy bringing those out from the start. I think MG42s will actually be really useful on a map like Slutsk West, just because it is so open. So they might get quite a lot of value throughout this game. Uh, Panzer Grenadiers there and the Pack 38. Uh, two more Panzer Grenadiers heading into the middle town area here. I think CZ is going to have to be a very careful with his infantry engagements because. If he bumps into all of the close range forces that Press John's putting down, he could be in trouble. And it looks like, well, ZZ has his deck almost set up for an open range engagement with the 5th SS, whilst Press John has his more set up for closer range engagements so far, from what I can see. Another MG42 on the field there for ZZ. And on the top side, we have more Panzergrands, more MG42s, Pack 38, Barry Führer, Pioneer in half tracks. So yeah, it looks like ZZ in the early game 
in phase A probably just has a card of Pioneers and a card of Panzergrands, and then is using the MGs in the support tab. Whereas on the side of Presto John, he's got the uh, Flammenwerfers in the support tab, and then Sturm Pioneers in his infantry tab instead, and Panzergrands in those half tracks. So interesting to see those uh, small differences between the players, and we'll have to really keep track of how it goes for both of them. I didn't really mention bands too much. I don't really have the information to hand on the bands of this game, but for those of you interested in common bands for uh, the Axis team, it's normally stuff like the 78 Sturm and the Hermann Göring division because they make decent use of uh, MP44s and MP44 equipped infantry can be really difficult to deal with. And then other ones include like the aggressive divisions uh, like Lovash if you put them in Vanguard for example they can be really really tough to beat. On a map like this though I wouldn't expect Lovash to do too well because one Panther could probably shut down the majority of a push. And we can see the Flammerwerf is getting into position here. The Panzergrenz are going to be opening up but the Flammerwerf should unseat them and this Flammerwerf is just going to land right on top of them. I think that Panzergren is not long for this world. Although we do see that the leader was absolutely sniped at the back there, taking away all of the leadership from those troops in the town. And that's going to make Prester John's, I was going to say commander, useless. But it looks like he removed his commander in favor of something else. Anyway, this Panzergren's doing a runner as the Sturm Pioneers carry on chasing him down. Look at that. Those are the Panzergrenz ahead. Sturm Pioneer blasted him with the flames, and that's going to be a surrendered squad. The Panzergrenz trying to engage them from a distance on either side, and well, with that push through the town from Presta John, he's managed to secure two, maybe three flags. He's got the one on the crossroads, he's got the one further back, another crossroads there, and this crossroads. That's going to be a lot of flags. However, Azizi making progress on the top side. He hasn't really been contested here yet. Uh, both of these flags coming under command of Zizi, which is kind of counterbalancing the push that Presta John has made into the town. So Presta John really focusing on the uh, close range engagement early on, and it looks like Zizi is going to be coming in with the captured Su 76s to counteract this infantry push. And these can be reasonably useful against infantry, but their low ammo on the HE shells could prove a problem. Now the AP shells there being used to take out the half tracks. This Panzer Grenadier is in trouble. Doesn't have any AT, so the half track just sitting there mowing them down. Eventually it will pin them. Prestigeon can move that forwards and either surrender them or just straight up kill them in this case because they were stood without cover. So more Panzergrenz arriving, another you know, Pioneers now on the field. And Pioneers are really what ZZ needs in this case. Although the Sturm Pioneers and the Flammenwerfers definitely have an advantage in a town scenario. Because every time some, flame, some flames land on a building, it forces the unit out of the building and therefore out of their heavy cover. Which allows the unit that's in the building to tear them a new one, especially if they have like short range weapons like the MP40, uh, MP40s. Yeah. Either way, on the top side we've got the uh, Panzergrenz engaging other Panzergrenz. The main difference here is that uh, the Panzergrenz of ZZ are in light cover and the Panzergrenz of Presta John are in heavy cover and you can j see just there how much of a difference it does make. Completely the same sort of units there. Of course, the Panzergrenz of Presta John do have the extra veterancy, two-star veterancy. That also helps, but yeah. <laughs> ZZ is unexperienced or inexperienced Panzergrenz <laughs> really having issues. You see the T-34-85 currently coming under fire a little bit from the SU-76s here. Panther D going to be engaging those as well and manages to pop one from a distance lovely shot there I really do love the camo on these things especially this Panther D the Alphatala Panther D it's really really cool it was one of the coolest looking units in Steel Division normally 44 in my opinion JU-88 going to be coming in from the start very cool camo on this plane and if there's one thing that the 5th SS Panzer has it's some cool camos 
So just a strafing plane there for Preston John to remove some of these Panzergrens in the open and the MG42s. And so far, Preston John's use of the leaders and just veterancy in general has actually done him a lot of favors. He's only losing ground up on this top side due to the MG42 here and also the Panzergrenadiers that are pushed up. So he could very easily fix this top side area and gain himself back a lot of flags. We've got to watch out and see if he does commit some more forces to the top side, especially with his T-34-85 going down up there to the Pac-38. Stern Pioneers and Flammenwerfer making their way through the trees once again. And they're not going to get much further than that due to the placement of these half drags. Easy keeping them away from the edge, just enough that they can't get killed by the 60 meter grenades. That half drag going to go down in flames after the SU 76 picks it up. We now have the Pac 38 engaging these SU 76s. I'm not a massive fan of the SU 76s. You can see Rester John making use of the Jagdpanzer. And the Jagdpanzer, of course, are trumping those SU 76s massively. If uh, ZZ starts to bring out his own Jagdpanzer, it's going to be interesting to watch how they do. But either way, the Panther A is on the field. And oh, look at that. Preston John going for the strafing run onto the Gepard. So he's trying to kill the Gepard ASAP so that he can maintain his air presence with the JU 88 G1s. I wouldn't be surprised to see if CZ doesn't even have any airplanes in phase A. Probably wasn't even expecting the JU 88s out of uh, Preston John, to be honest, because I certainly wasn't. Most of the time, I think the players just tend to bring the Focke Wolves. So, 251 to Mortar Half Track is on the field. And ZZ will help me bring up a very important point here. So, close range infantry, it's very good at taking on other infantry at close range. But it doesn't matter how good an infantry squad is if you have artillery to counter it. Because in this case, what's going to happen is the mortars will pin down these squads, if not kill them, and then the Panzergren can move up. And the Panzergren usually would have no chance against Stern Pioneers in this scenario. But if they're pinned, then the Panzergren can just walk forwards and surrender them. And that's all that really needs to happen. So this the same goes for things like Begleit Pioneers or um, squads with a lot of MP44s. You can quite simply just pin them down and then run them over with another unit in order to surrender them. And it's something that looks like ZZ is going to try and do there in the town. Hey, okay, more Panzergrenz and Pioneers pushing. Looks like uh, this time around ZZ bringing up his battery fuel to provide the extra veterancy. But this one Panzergrenz still got two star veterancy and definitely going to cause a lot of issues, especially since it's in heavy cover, whilst ZZ's troops are still in light cover. Oh, JU-88s, uh, they have line of sight onto the 251-2 half-track, and great job by Pressure John so far. Did manage to kill that Gepard, we saw that earlier. And then the uh, the 251-2 might also go down, which would be a terrible loss for ZZ. A nice job with these JU-88s so far. Um, two Gepards, however, have been purchased on the side of ZZ, and it's going to be very, very hard for these to now stay in the sky. When one of those Gepards is there on its own, uh, that's that's something, but when there's two, the JU-88 is not going to have too much luck. They'll probably get forced back, I would imagine, before they can do too much to the 251 too. Yeah, you can see this time around, it's going to take a lot of damage. Going to be forced to leave the air. And with a third one coming in, ZZ really wants to get these out of the sky. Will one of those go down? No, it will not. Now, the half tracks on this bottom side have been dealt with. That's going to actually open up quite a big salient here for Preston John. Maybe push over this flag, which would be nice for him. These Stern Pioneers. Surprised to see kind of Preston John stepping, uh, stopping in his tracks. I guess he did have to deal with the two units of Pioneers. But even so, Pioneers versus Flamers in Towns... The Flamers should always win, so getting aggressive there with the Flammenwerfers would be a great idea, and it looks like he's decided to start to move those up. Maybe a little bit too late, but of course is 
preoccupied with the push coming in from ZZ on the top side. Now ZZ's infantry positioning is the main thing that's giving him flags up here. It's not necessarily the fact that he's got a lot or got a lot of value out of his units. It's just his positioning. Otherwise, Presser John would have a much bigger lead right now. Killing this Panzergren, though, will maybe give back this flag, although I guess the MG42 is sorting that out now. Oh, we do see the first of the Focke-Wulf 190F8 Panzerblitz. We've just moved into Phase B, and it looks like uh, ZZ has immediately purchased one of those to do some damage to this Panther D. And that's going to force Presto John now to invest in his own AA if he wants to stop his Panther D dying to the next strike. So the Panzergrens are going to go down. Presto John once again taking a lot of ground on this bottom side. He's got so many troops here. He's got the Jagdpanzers, he's got the T-34-85, he's got the Panther D. The fact he isn't capitalizing on his position right now is actually pretty scary for Presto John. Like, he had line of sight on the Gepards on the 251-2 for a very long time. And therefore, he had his Ju-88 strafe them. And that kind of basically showed that there wasn't any armor presence here. If he'd moved forward sooner with his Jagdpanzers, he could have just popped all of these Gepards and the 251-2s as his Ju-88s continued to strafe, which would have given him, him a lot of presence on the bottom side, maybe even allowed him to get up to the spawns. And if you can cut off the spawns on the bottom side, basically all of these flags are fair game for Presto John. And yeah, Presto John, for the start of this game, has had a massive amount of kills compared to ZZ. And it's really, really important to point that out because in a mirror match, that makes all the difference. Just getting value for money out of your units is super important. And yeah, I questioned Presto John's use of close range infantry on a more open map, but he's really, really made it work out for the town engagement. While CZ with the Panzergrens and MG42 set up for the longer range engagements hasn't worked out for him too well at all. Uh, now another Pioneer Fielder coming in to replace the one that was lost in the town previously. We've got the Jagdpanzer taking a shot at the Gepard. Is that going to get the kill? This is going to be very, very careful with these Gepards and so on. He's spreading them out so that he can get more coverage for his Panthers, but... I think Presto John will probably focus down the Gepard so that he can bring in his own aircraft again. Now we see a half track on the side, mortar half track that is, on the side of Presto John coming in on the right hand side there. Pack 38 moving up as well. No pack 40s just yet. I'd like to see pack 40s on the field for sure, because pack 40s would be lovely for taking care of uh, Panther A's. But yeah, just look at this time, the time that Presto John is giving ZZ right now. The last couple minutes. ZZ's all he's done is just buy two Panthers. And it, that's managed to stabilize the bottom side. Now we see the Fock Wolf coming in again. Looking for the second rocket strike onto the Panther D. Should get the kill this time around. The first time round, he just did lots of damage. Second time round, finishes the job. And there we go. Panther D is down. And Presto John. Still not really being too proactive on the bottom side. On the top, he does have these two mortar half-tracks that will definitely allow him to win the engagements against infantry on the top. Uh, the trouble with facing off against Panzergrens is if you want to reveal Panzergrens, you've got to basically put an infantry squad in their way so that the Panzergrens fire at them because it's it's value for the Panzergrens to engage at like 500 uh, meter dif distance. So generally players will let them do so. And then that's when you bring down the mortar fire in order to pin them in order to carry on. But Panzergrens are extremely deadly. So you're going to lose a lot of men trying to do that. And at the moment, I don't think any of these squads are really healthy enough to um, do that just yet. I guess you could, in theory, throw up the um, 251 half tracks to the tree lines and, and see what you find. But just got to be careful there. Uh, so I think... Presser John's ability to push on the top side is rather limited, unless maybe he uses a smoke from the Flammerwerfers or something. But either way, back to this bottom side, uh, I still stand by my statement that Presser John has allowed uh, ZZ to come back into the game massively right now. Onto the field we have Nikolusilek. He is the ace of the 5th SS Panzer. 
with the one of the best panther camos in the game. Very, very cool unit. We'll have to see how he does throughout. The only trouble with using the leader versions of Panthers early on is you can't make them two-star veterancy uh, because the veterancy of leader units is basically set in stone. T3485 did go down there to the Panther 8. Panther 8 making short work of it. Now we see the Jagdpanzer engaging these half-tracks. Jagdpanzer is going to want to stay out of line of sight of the Panthers though because the Panthers they have the same armor as the Jagdpanzer, but they have obviously a better gun. So 185 millimeters of penetration in this case. Easily going to get through the frontal armor of a Jagdpanzer, while the Jagdpanzer will struggle to get through the frontal armor of a Panther A. And that's the big difference there. Just got to make sure that don't allow those engagements to happen. And, well, that's exactly what Preston John's allowing to happen right now. JU88s have come out. Good to see Preston John making use of those on the top side now. But, yeah, I am quite frustrated <laughs> not seeing him push on. Anyway, let's see if ZZ can take advantage. Panzergren's coming in with Panzerfaust. They're going to unload early and start pushing towards the trees and the town on the bottom side. Got the Focke Wolf 190 coming in again. This time going straight for Nikolusi Leg. That's side armor. And Nikolusi Leg down. Big kill there. Big, big kill. Lovely value coming out of the Focke-Wulf 190 F8. And the JU-88s, they were trying to shoot that down, but not going to happen. There's a Flak 43 here and three Gepards. The JU-88 might even get shot down, and it does indeed. JU-88 is a goner. Another two expensive units gone for Presta John. These are 90 points apiece. And whilst they can kill a single Gapard on their own, once they team up, they're not going anywhere. Oh, look at the damage that the Panzergrens can do to other units in the open. That Panzergren got demolished. No leadership on that unit. And wow, that's pretty tough. That's one thing you can do, actually. If you basically give your infantry veterans see as they run across the open they'll take a lot less damage from those kind of situations where they don't have any cover because for infantry veterans see does reduce the damage they take now the mortar strike did come down onto the panzergrens and pioneers here that was intended to allow these two panzergrens to push forwards but zz making the smart play of using the focke wolf with the AT rockets to just pin those infantry squads so they couldn't make any more ground. Because I think at this point, ZZ realizes he's actually relatively weak on the top side. And then on the bottom, you know, he's kind of focusing most of his efforts to take care of the rest of these Panzergrens and so on. Now the Gepards are actually being moved up quite far indeed. And I think the intention here for ZZ is to make use of the 20 mil to take out these Panzergrens and so on. If he can reveal them, the 20 mils will do a lot of damage in a short space of time. Panther A on the field once again for Presta John. This is another Führer. That's going to start hitting those Panzergrens. Unfortunately, the Panther A is not the best at dealing with infantry at range. They don't have too much damage. You can see they're only doing one damage a shot there. Sometimes they don't do any damage at all if they slightly miss. But this Panzergren, damn. You could say they were playing with fire, <laughs> being that close to the Flammenwerfer. I think maybe ZZ's trying to bait that. I don't know if he knows that the Flammenwerfer's there or not. I guess probably not. He knows there's an infantry squad. He's actually going to go hunt for it. Okay. I was saying you could probably bait this if you allowed the Flammenwerfer to find your Panzergrenz and then run out into the open and cause the Flammenwerfer to follow you, then you could probably kill the Flammenwerfer pretty quickly. And in this case, the Panzergrenz actually managing to sit on the flames and not move, which is actually vital to allow them to use their MG42s. The Flammenwerfer, will they get them? No, they won't. 
the Panzergrenz take them out, do lose five men in the process. Panther Raid does take out a unit of reinforcements coming down the road. We see a rocket strike from ZZ here, the Werfer being used on the town. So we can see the two stkz 71s here from Presta John and the 251 to Mortar Half Track. The Wielfach Werfer is currently just unloading rockets on top of that area. Presta John's got to be really careful. I think like a direct hit from one of these rockets would actually kill the stkz 71s This is going to be really, really nasty kills onto Presta John's units if they hit the mark. Oh, that was close. There's a lot of rockets coming in. It looks like the STKFZ7s might make it out. Maybe just. Damn, that was close. They both took some damage at least. You can see them beating up a little bit as they fall back. Here comes the Focke-Wolf 190F8 with the two SDKFZ-71s falling back. Lovely timing there from ZZ to get the rocket strike in onto the Panther A Führer. And after Phase A, ZZ has really been making some solid plays so far. JU-88, way too slow to catch up to a Focke Wolf. But Presta John making his way back on this top side. A lot of half tracks just not being utilized at the moment. Got the two Stug 4s back there, Jagdpanzer 4 and the Stug 4 Führer on the ridge. Can't help but feel like a lot of this should be supporting the Panzergrenz as they push up. But he should be able to push through all of these units and, and take a couple of flags very quickly indeed. But ZZ continues to bring in forces on the bottom side. Determined to take back the town. Panzergrenz Führer in the... 251.10 half track. Nice use of the uh, AT half track there as the Panzergrenfuhrer do a lovely dance for us. Got the Panzergrenfuhrer with Panzerfaust coming down, and some of them are going to be coming in with the KFZ 70, one of them coming in with the SDKFZ 251.1. And a couple of them did get reloaded there. Oh, it looks like that was to potentially avoid the mortar fire. If that was intentional. Lovely move there from ZZ. Basically, it allows the mortar strike to come down. Then you can unload them again. Or, in this case, just drive down the road and engage. So, I think this Panzergren with Panzerfaust found the unit that was holding the front line forwards. And ZZ allowed the Panzergrens to kill that unit. And then is now going to unload the Panzergrens further up in order to save some time. Right now the armor coming into play. We got the Stug 4s coming up behind Jagdpanzer, the SDKFZ 71s ripping to shreds the Panzer Grenadiers through the light cover. And ZZ has been forced to respond two Panther Ds, Panzer 4s coming in and we're now into the full swing of this battle. We've moved into phase C with both players utilizing balance. So 170 points per minute on both sides. They're gonna have an abundance of Panther Ds. If you bring the Panther D cards in phase C in the fifth SS Panzer, you can get a lot of them. So maybe both players will start relying on that throughout this game. Oh, there goes one of the SDKFZ 71s to the Bielfach Werfer. And taking out the AA is vital for this matchup in a mirror match between these two because of those Fokker Wolves with the Panzer Blitz missiles or rockets, sorry. If you can shut down the SDKFZ 71s, yep, the Fokker Wolf coming in right on cue. Looking for the kill onto the Panther A, the Panther A reversing just in time to avoid an accurate strike from the Fokker Wolf. And CC just shutting down all the armor down here so far. Presta John also making use of the abundance of Panther Ds in the bottom side. He's got a nice three pack of Panther Ds here, but no AA to protect them. And now we've also moved, moved into phase C. We might see more Focke Wolf 190s flying around. I think if you bring a card of Focke Wolf 190 Panzer Blitz in phase C, you can get like four on a card. So it may be if ZZ's got 
2 in phase B and 4 in phase C, he'd have 6 in total that he can use to completely shut down Prester John's uh, armor. Now, I keep talking as though ZZ is in the lead in this game when he's not. But I think it mainly comes down to the way that Prester John has played so far. And the fact that ZZ is being very proactive on the bottom side here. And the only reason that he's not behind is because of the leftover troops. Or he is behind, sorry. is because of the leftover troops of Prester John. Like once he cleans up the Panzergrens here, he's actually going to be ahead in flags. And Prester John's going to start losing tickets. Mind you, Prester John's push on this top side has built up quite significantly. But that's going to be a Stug 4 going down to the Path of D. Stug 4s really, really do struggle in this engagement. Also, the Panzer 4 there backing things up. Helping out by doing some damage before the Panther D takes the shot. The Stugs at that range uh, do have some penetration against the Panther D, especially since they only have 120mm uh, armor, but the Panther's always guaranteed to penetrate, so that's the difference, really. And the two Stug 4s are going to go down. Panther D, Panzer 4 survive, Panther D on the top side covering this area. And it looks like ZZ's kind of stabilized that. Also going to be bringing in a commander to help out with the Panzergrenfuhrer. Planning to give his tanks the two-star veterancy if they don't get killed by mortars. Wow, lovely use of the mortar there from Prester John. Takes out the Panther D. Good job indeed. So whilst Prester John may have fallen asleep on the bottom side, he's actually done quite well to take control of the top side. Especially with that Panther D dying, it makes ZZ almost incapable of pushing back for the time being until he invests in more troops. Uh, this is a little bit of a mistake though from Prester John. He's given his mortar a fire position order, but since it doesn't have any HE shells remaining, it uses the machine gun instead. So it's actually driving up so that it can put machine gun fire on this point. Which leaves the 251-2 mortar half-track very vulnerable indeed. And if ZZ fails to kill that, it would be unfortunate. Very, very lucky for Presser John. Here comes the Wilfackwerfer once again. Uh, these Wilfackwerfer strikes have been lovely so far. He's really managed to keep on top of the positioning of Presser John's AA. Oh, and there's a rocket onto one of the SDKF Z71s. These aren't cheap. 120 points apiece for an SDKF Z71. And that field fact Verfa finding so much value. Well, there's actually a second one on the field now, both of those costing 100 points apiece. Here comes a Focke Wolf 190. No AA on this bottom side. Should probably target the one that's damaged. He does indeed. And that is job done as the Focke Wolf 190 flies off into the distance. And this SD KFZ-71 is a little late to the party. Doesn't stop one of those Panther Ds going down. Now we see the Panther A versus Panther D engagement and the Panther Ds come out on top. That is not something I expected. I thought I was going to be saying that the Panther A would take out those Panther Ds but did not in this case. Lovely penetration shots from the Panther D do get the job done. That's really, really good news for Presta John. If he backs this up with a few more infantry units, he might be able to just uh, push through, at least through the bottom side of this town for the time being. But a really strong position here from ZZ, and no use so far from Presta John of those Focke Wolf 190s with the Panzer Blitz. So the 251 2s, that's going to be engaging the Pack 38. Trying to get rid of that AT gun so that the Panther D can provide some more presence as the Panzer Grenadiers advance. Panzer Grenadier should be providing two-star veteran C to these infantry once they get closer, especially with the commander here on the top side. So this is interesting. It's come down to a point where both players are kind of in a bit of a standoff, but. As I said, Presta John hasn't used the Focke Wolf 190s. Here come a couple of them. This is usually how you'd see them used. Two at a time. This is transmission damage though, so this might be a bit overkill. Nope, definitely needed two. Gets the job done. Found the D down. Yeah, he needed two in that, uh, in that case. You saw the first volley of uh, rockets didn't really get the job done, so the second one finished it off. 
Uh, I thought the transmission damage, uh, normally that means that the tank's damaged enough uh, that you only really need one rocket strike to get the job done. And, and with a side shot, maybe it could have could have done the job. But anyway, that's going to be another Panther D down on the side of ZZ. And it seems like bringing out Panthers to this battle at the moment is an absolute death sentence on both sides. All of the Panthers that Preston Johns brought on this bottom side got cleaned up very early on. Now he's got these two Panther Ds and the Panther A Fiora remaining. This one's already come under rocket strikes previously. Oh, and another two Focke-Wulf 190s. Presser John either sitting on these for a while, or I guess maybe had a lot of points to spare. Got to be careful. Looks like maybe he was going to hit these Panzer Fours, but two Flak 43s coming in on the top side. For ZZ. I really do like the use of the Flak 43s. These are 37mm AA pieces that are actually quite accurate and if they're placed nearby the commander here he can get a lot of damage done to a Focke-Wulf that's trying to rocket a Panzer IV. You can see the 37 trying to get some shots in there does manage to weapon jam one of the Focke-Wulf 190s. Preston John's going to fire them off for another day. So the two mortar half tracks on this bottom side, uh, trying to help pin down these Panzergrens uh, with Presser John moving into the late game. It looks like he doesn't have much in the way of close range infantry left. So both teams kind of fully relying on Panzergrens, and I think Presser John just because he has less in position already. It's going to struggle in infantry engagements. It all just comes down to numbers when the infantry units are the same. And certainly ZZ has more at the moment. Our Panzer again going down in the open to the half tracks. And here comes another strike from the Vilfakwerfer. So I don't think I mentioned the Vilfakwerfer at the start. I completely forgot that the FSS have them. But ZZ's been making great use of them so far. Personally, as I said, I, I like to use the Hummels. I think the Hummels can be really, really nice, especially for killing things like AT guns in this scenario, because the damage from the Vilfakwerfer rockets can be quite limited. They're great for, of course, killing the SDKFZ 71s We've seen that happen so far. Look at that. Another one going down there. And there's more or less no AA on this bottom side other than the SDKFZ 71 Oh, Focke-Wulf 190 coming in for a strike. That could be very dead. ZZ going to respond with his own Focke Wolf 190. Of course, they do go the same speed, so if the Focke Wolf doesn't get shots on now, it's never going to. ZZ realizes that and is going to pull off. You'd have to bring these in very preemptively if you wanted to try and get on the back of an enemy Focke Wolf. Yeah, the Gepard's in a good position to stop that strike from having any effect. Currently 13 to 11. ZZ just kind of sitting this one slowly at the moment. Not really doing too much. Maybe moving up his armor here and there. Got a couple Panther A's coming up to the center open area. Panther D moving up to that center hill. A couple Panthers moving through the town. Oh, that looks like the rocket's being used once again to try and counter battery the mortars. Or maybe ZZ is using it in an attempt to kill the AA if he didn't see it die previously. Now those rockets, they have to again hit more or less directly in order to kill uh, the armored units. But there we do see one of the Panzergrens I think going down before they unloaded. Second time we've seen that now from Preston John. Although now, Focke Wolf 190 is coming in. Rocket strikes onto the Panther A. Gonna get the job done. We see the Focke Wolves coming in from ZZ. Can he shoot down Preston John's Focke Wolves? No, he cannot. Unless that one goes down to the 37. Don't think it will. Wow, Preston John actually gonna take out one of ZZ's Focke Wolves. Can ZZ reply with the AA? These are important engagements. 
If Prester John keeps his Focke-Wulf 190s up while CZs go down, then Prester John has a significant advantage. Same goes the other way. And it looks like that focke is just going to get out alive. Good timing from Prester John does manage to capitalize on that engagement. Also gets away with killing the Panther A. So lovely stuff. 251-2. Looking for the Mortar Strike onto the damaged Panther B. This is a trick that many of you could learn. Uh, if a tank is already damaged, Mortar Shells can kill it. So this is basically what try, uh, Prester John is trying to do right now with those last few mortar rounds. Trying to land mortar strikes nearby to just weaken the tank so that either one of his tanks can just one-shot the enemy tank or future mortar strikes can get the kill. Ooh, that was a 2v1. The Panther D on the hill and the Panther A further down. Make short work of the Panther A in the light cover here. That is now a burning wreck. Another panther bites the dust. Now Prester John looking for the point on the bottom side. He's got his half tracks on the way to engage this area. And yeah, ZZ's got this pretty well fortified. He's had the Pioneers and Panzergrens in here for most of the game so far. Panzer and Ixong's there also ready to take out any panthers that get nearby. It's going to be difficult for a bunch of Panzergrens to attack this from the open. Uh, all ZZ really needs to do is grab this Panzergren and put it in the edge here and it should be okay. Although saying that, Presto John might just be in a position to do this. Especially if he gets the SDK of Z71 involved at like a 1000 meter range. He could decimate some of these Panzergrens in the buildings very quickly. Panther D is of course going to help pin down the Panzergrens at range. Probably not too too much damage. 120mm mortars. Now being utilized by Prester John. Those aren't very accurate, but they can certainly pin down units very quickly. And in this case, the Panzergrens on the edge of the town are pinned. The ones further in, maybe not so much. But Prester John probably wants to try and take back that point just to stop the bleeding. I think that's his plan at the moment, is just push this bottom flag to get back to 12 to 12 and then maybe take this flag to get the 13 to 11 in his favor i'm sure he'd be happy with that at this point these panzergrens are going to unload and they're pretty close but look how much damage these take six and seven men rest john realizes his mistake gonna carry on will zz see this happening and allow his Panzer and Iktongs to fire. It's super important he lets them fire. If he can get a kill onto a unit before they unload, very, very important for holding this bottom side, and he does get just that. These half-tracks, <laughs> damn, they are in very precarious positions. Panzer and Iktongs once again looking for a Panzer Shrek shot. Instead, just engaging with the G43s. Pioneers really need to get involved down here. ZZ has been moving this and paying attention to this area, so definitely needs to start moving these Panzergrens. Panzervenichtungs have gone down. The 251s are going to be more difficult to deal with now. Not impossible, but definitely more difficult to deal with. Oh, HG111 coming in with the 1,000 kilogram bomb. Where is that going to drop? We're going to drop it on the flag itself. doesn't drop it at all unless he's potentially flying it around the edge to go for the Wilfagwerfer nope he's coming back again a lovely camo on the HG111 very awesome looking aircraft those Panzergrens they find the pioneers and they regret it one man left in that Panzergrenz squad. These half tracks going to find it difficult to advance onto the Panzergrenz and Pioneers without getting killed themselves. Very few are ready to take on the Panzergrenz behind enemy lines, if needs be. But this little push from Prester John has forced Zizi to at least invest a little bit into this point. There goes the 1,000 kilogram bomb.
by pioneers. Now, these pioneers are pinned, but this Panzergren did not get pinned with that bombing strike. If all of these units were pinned, just one of these half tracks zooming forwards would surrender them all. It was a good idea. I'm just not sure it was executed correctly, unless this second bombing strike does the job. Okay. Now, Presta John, can you capitalize on that? Rockwolf 190 does shoot down one of those HE-111s. That's a pretty expensive loss. 105 points down the drain. Especially if the half-track doesn't get the surrenders. It looks like it will, though. Presta John on the ball does manage to find the surrenders. Lovely stuff. Cleans it out. Job done. So, the HE-111 not wasted after all. And Presta John happily takes the 12 to 12 on the bottom side of the map. The two mortar half tracks now going to be used to help the Panzergrens move across the open. These mortar rounds falling onto the Panzergrens there might help just kill them off. And there they go. This Panzergren trying to run into position to help pin down those units. These Panther A is currently just bouncing shots from this pack 38. That's what we could hear further down. There we go. There goes the shot bouncing up in the sky. We're going to see another one come in. I do love watching these bounces. Okay. It looks like President John actually stopped that from firing. So it didn't continue to reveal its position to uh, any of ZZ's artillery. Look at that Panzergren, lovely position there. Uh, moving the Panzergren slightly forwards would allow that to get two star veterancy. ZZ is going to do it. Once they have two star veterancy, they gain the extra accuracy. And these Panzergrens are going to be toast if they move across the open. Now the mortar fire actually coming down onto the Panther that's sitting still in the open. And these Panzergrens, they've actually made an aggressive push across the open onto the AT gun of Prester John. It's forced the SDK of Z71 back on the bottom side. Well, now we see the Forkwolf 190s coming in from Presta John. Looking for the kill onto the Panther D. Oh, they're turning away. I think Presta John's going to try and get on the back of ZZ's Forkwolf. Okay, ZZ kind of pulls off from attacking the Forkwolf and kills one of the Panther Ds instead. They traded the Panther A's. Or the Panther D's on the bottom side. Neither of them losing their Fock Wolves. Managed to somehow get away with that. One of the trucks with the Panzergrens did die on the bottom side before they got into the town. There's Pack 38 doing the job there. But he has just about managed to reinforce that. But with the positioning in these trees, it actually gives ZZ a good chance of taking this area back. Especially if he uses his Wielfeckwerfer. I wouldn't be surprised though if uh, ZZ doesn't actually have that many Opa Blitz. They so might not even have enough ammo at the moment to resupply his Wielfeckwerfers. It's in a sort of 1v1 scenario. You never really expect a game to go on this long. We're currently 43 minutes and 24 seconds into the game. At Panzergrenz from Presta John. Looking to stop these two in their tracks. And I mentioned already how when it comes down to units of the same type engaging each other, numbers is all that really matters. And having 30 versus 17, certainly in favour of Presta John. If he can make sure they're in the heavy cover, which he's just done, then he should be able to win that decisively. These Panzergrens. Currently just jumping backwards and forwards, I imagine just so they can stop themselves being hit by the half-track in the Panther D while still being able to engage the Panzergrens that are pushing across. They are having lost these Panzergren units. That's actually going to be uh, tough as easy now to take back the bottom side town because the Panther D and the STK FZ-71 are now free to basically shoot at this area without having to worry about being flanked. We've got the 120mm mortars from Presta John on the top side. Presta John just looking to mortar ZZ's Panthers to death. It is definitely a strategy you can use, but 
it's quite unreliable and it does take a lot of time. This is again why I like to use the self-propelled artillery like Hummels in the late game, just because they have that much more damage and they're much more accurate, especially with corrected shot. We've got the Panther engagement happening here. Panther D on the hill, gonna go down to the Panther A's. Panther D engaging from a distance. Does bounce the Panther A. Artillery fire falling on that Panther D will make it less effective and less accurate. Also got to note that Pastor John does have the one star veteran C on his Panthers. While CZ has no veteran C in the distance there. And that's going to be another Panther D going down. The Panther A is really getting the better of those longer range engagements. And that mainly comes down to the fact that the Panther A has a 130 millimeters of frontal armor compared to the 120 of the Panther D. And in a mirror match that makes all the difference. CZ's Panther A is now moving up on the bottom side to accompany the Panther D and the Panzergrenfuhrer also moving up to give the veterancy to the Panzergrenz to push across the open. Jagdpanzer taking shots at the 37mm A8. This 37mm, if it continues to move forwards, is very dead. Is he going to try and fall it back ASAP? Actually uses smoke to prevent the Jagdpanzer from finding that kill. Very smart indeed. Still 12 to 12. Still all to play for. So it's now come down to the point where I think both players are relatively low on resources. And most of what they have is probably on the field now. So they've got to be very careful about how they invest those resources in order to gain flags. And that's basically what's happening now. Both players are calculating the moves that they're going to make next. Presser John pushing up with his Stug Force on the top side. And I'm, I am very curious to see Stug Force because Stug Force, they are quite good on their own. But with the 5th SS, you have Jagdpanzers in the AT tab and you have Panthers in the tank tab. So Stug Force. They don't really have a place when you look at it like that. I guess maybe availability is a thing. And maybe you can bring them in at higher veterancy with more availability. But it seems to me as though like the Stugs in a lot of ways are often a waste when you do have the Jagdpanzer and Panthers available. Because they don't have like any more machine guns or anything. They don't really do too much more HE damage. That's, that's something uh, that's a little bit different between the two players at least. You see the ZZ is more focused on the Panzer Force. I think that's basically Prester John's equivalent there using the Stug Force. The Stug Force versus a Panzer Force, great. Stug Force is probably going to win. But the Panther Force has so much more application due to its two MG34s. And there we see uh, one of the Stug Force actually going down. STKFZ25110. Going to have a go. Uh, range. The loader was killed in the Stug Force, so that wouldn't have been able to reload if it had fired and missed its first shot. But 250 10 goes down to the first shot. It's a nice job by the Stug. 120 mils, going to take care of that Flak 43 that retreated earlier. And all is silent on this bottom side. Presto John bringing up some Panzergrenz. You can see he's moving up to, the, to this area initially and then he'll manually move them across the open. Uh, another mistake that a lot of players do tend to make, especially like less experienced players, is if they want, say, infantry to help with this engagement, they'll just click to bring in infantry here, and then the infantry will like come down this road. Whereas the smart thing to do would be to place your infantry over here, kind of like Presto John is doing right now, and then have them drive in from this side so they utilize the cover on the map rather than you know just sprinting across the open. And that's how a lot of transports tend to get killed with infantry in them. Hands again with Panzerfausts. Can they kill that half track? Yes, they will. Or reveal themselves to the Jagdpanzer though, which opens up immediately with its MG34. Bokwolf 190 coming in. They were looking for the shots onto the Stug 4 of ZZ. Oh, it looks like uh, ZZ also making use of Stug 4s. Just didn't bring them in until later on in the game. So maybe both players do like using those. Again, personally, not a fan. 
But the Panzer of Nickdong's there. Taking out another Stug 4. Goes down. Panzer 4's moving up with the Stug 4. And now we have the HE111 coming in on the top side. The Panzergrens are moving in on the bottom side. The infantry that's moving across the open, Preston John has in the half tracks, whilst the ones that are probably going to push through, I guess, these trees aren't coming in the half tracks. There we go, the HE111 has the EVAC Winchester order queued, so it will leave as soon as it drops his bomb. Bombs away. That's going to be a very dead Panzergunfjörder. Especially after being hit by that mortar strike. Damn. Big 4 does actually survive the strike. But so many smoke piles coming up there. Look at that. It's full of smoke down here. And the Jagdpanzer just only adds to that. Blimey. Absolute massacre on this top side. Off tracks. And Stug's dead galore. Damn. The Presser John still hasn't done too much with his infantry on the bottom side. Still no movement from ZZ. Both players now fully focused on the top by the looks of things. Panzergrenz trying to engage the enemy at range. But this is a kind of a mistake, I feel, from ZZ. Massive mortar target here for Presser John. And Presser John has shown his hand in terms of the amount of 120 mils and 251s he has, the 251 2 mortar half tracks. That's a dead Stug 4. Nice job by the Focke Wolf 190. AA at this point might be a little bit too far back to really make too much of a difference. But he's had to basically deploy these 37s close to these Panthers just to stop them from being taken care of. But I mean, it's just one Panzergren sitting out in the open at the moment, just chilling. Oh, speaking of camos, 5th SS has some of the most awesome Panzer Grenadier uniforms. There we go. <laughs> Panzer 4, Dug 4, now engaging the Jagdpanzer at range. Yeah, the Jagdpanzer just trumping both of those. Not really going to be able to penetrate from the 2,000 meters. Bockwolf 190, hanging about. Maybe he'll go for the shot onto the Stug 4 there in the open. Penetration at value is actually still going to be pretty low from the Jagdpanzer 4. Onto something like a Stug 4. 135mm of penetration versus 100mm. And the two Panzer guns are moving up. Pushing out some of ZZ's forces. Going to force ZZ to reinforce on the bottom side. Brings in some more Panzergrenz. I'm going to assume though that ZZ is just preparing to take back the flag on the bottom. Because it doesn't matter too much if he loses these tree lines. As long as he has an infantry squad in this area, which he does currently. Buckwolf 190 coming in for the kill on the bottom side. There's two SDKs at 7 ones, but they're a little bit a uh, little bit far back. This turn to the left, it should be okay. And looks like he'll just about get out of there. So weakened one of the Panther Ds. Didn't quite get the kill. These two Panther Ds reversing slightly. Actually, these are Panther A's. To stop the Panzer Grens from moving across the open. Oh, Pack 38 did take out one of the half tracks before a squad unloaded. So another squad dying before they unloaded. These Panzergrenz moving into reinforce once again. Uh, looks like Preston John just marking that AT gun with an attack beacon so he doesn't forget where it is. That way he can engage it with his mortars in the future. A T3485 left over from ZZ now coming in on the top. Panther A also coming in. Two more T-3485s actually further back as well. Young Panzer, can it find either of these kills? It's just been firing for a very long time now. The Panther A, though, is going to certainly turn the tide in favour of ZZ. 
Unless the Mortifier comes down from Prestigeon. Easy now pushing 13 to 11 again. Having taken... I think it's actually this flag. Yeah, I think it was this flag from Prestigeon. Because he did already control this flag. And Prestigeon making a failed attack to push in there. Now 13 minutes and 25 seconds left until ZZ would win the game. Now, it's all to play for, really, if we look at it in terms of the last game. Uh, Presser John already won game down to ZZ. ZZ only needs to win this game, and then move, he'll move on to the semi-finals to face off against Gonzo. So Presser John... He's got to do everything he can to stay in this game if he wants to move on himself. So I expect to see quite an explosive end to this game where both players kind of commit all they have to win the game, basically. And at that point, it will come down to what's left and who has, throughout the game, really got the most value for money out of their units and who has the best composition of forces for their balance deck in terms of availability so yeah it's going to be interesting to see we've, we've got the uh, Panzergrenz here being pinned down by the Mortifier and the flag goes back in favour of ZZ on the bottom side very tough for ZZ to reinforce this area and ZZ making sure to move his pack 38 after it fired previously so that Mortifier from Resta John can't uh, take that out and then he can continue to use the pack 38 to kill reinforcements pushing towards that bottom town Buck Wolf 190 coming in for the rocket strike onto the infantry does uh, a reasonable amount of damage and pins down both of those squads oh unfortunate there for ZZ loses a unit before it unloads gotta be careful of that Panther D and straight down that road uh, ZZ now pushing up on the top side, making good use of veterancy with these Panzergrenfjörder, or the uh, with the Panzergrenfjörder there and the Panzergrenadiers. Clean up those Panzergrens. Two T-34s and the Stug 4 on the top side, pressing round. Also a Panzergrenfjörder being brought up for those maybe as well. Make those three-star veterancy, which would be really, really nice. Get a lot of value out of three-star units. Panzergrens. The one with more men should come out on top. But it's going to be close. These Panzergrens engaging down here. These ones aren't in a building, whilst these ones are. So light cover versus heavy cover again. But severely outnumbered, so the MGs should get the job done there. Also modifier coming in helps uh, the Panzergrens win in the town. It's just going to come down to like these minor engagements. More Panzergrenz though for ZZ and his availability in the late game seems way more at the moment than Presta John. And it does feel like throughout the game that Presta John, his deck composition is really built for like a more early phase like aggression than ZZ's is. Like ZZ has definitely played more for the late game in his deck composition than Presta John has. Uh, nice bombing strike there. Oh, lovely move. Doesn't pin down his own Panzergrenz. Was pinning down ZZ's. Well placed bombing strike from Presta John. Finds the surrenders. Nicely done. Now the Panther A's. Uh, on this top side. Gotta be careful. Oh, just unloaded the battery fuel in time. This Panther A is kind of outnumbered in terms of armor. Stug 4, two T-34s. Now, getting the SDK of Z71 into a position where it could engage the infantry at 1,000 meter range might be quite a nice idea. Especially if this SDK of Z7 just kind of comes over to the left slightly. Might leave itself vulnerable to the pack 40 though. So, although Presta John did make that nice move and take care of those Panzergrenz, he's still outnumbered on this bottom side. Panther A, pan uh, another Panther A there, 250-10, pack 40. They're all currently hitting these Panzergrenz that are trying to push out towards this flag, I assume. Presta John in a tough position now. The Focke-Wolf 190 is coming on the top side. They do take out one of the T-3485s, but the SDK of Z-71 is going to go down. 
Looks like Presser John did have the idea to use the SDGZ 71 on the infantry, but you can't allow them to get in range really of the MG 42s of the Panzergrens. That's why I suggested the 1000 meter range engagement. Oh, but Presser John, he's got a lot of tanks left. Damn. That's uh, four Panther A's being bought at the same time, and that Stug 4 is not going to have a good day. Well, if the Panther A's can hit, that is. There we go. All right, this Panther A now helping ag against the infantry that are moving across. Uh, these are dropping their smoke, the 251-2s, and I think both sides have more or less run out of ammunition. As I say that, I see the Opal Blitz for Presta John coming in to resupply those mortars on the top side. I think maybe, well, I guess Presta John... He probably has a lot more supply uh, just because he is utilizing the 120 more mortars and they do get through supply very very quickly indeed but on the side of ZZ well yeah he's been out of supply for a while I feel buddy if you're gonna come under fire from the T-34 uh, but with these mortars resupplied Gonna be more smoke coming down. Not quite sure what Presta John's trying to do. Doesn't have much infantry really to defend. I, I guess maybe he's just smoking off either the AT guns or maybe pretending to push, like doing a bit of a fake on the top side. But more infantry coming in for Presta John. Three more units of Panzergren with Panzer, uh, Panzerfaust. You've got three more Panzergrens coming into the town here. Uh, these ones are coming down the main road. It looks like one of them died before it unloaded. He does have a lot of troops. Um, yeah, I mean, two more Panther Ds on the bottom side. Has he just been floating for a very long time? I feel like he has been. And uh, that might be a big mistake, honestly. Because although Zizi is bringing in more troops... He has been more or less bringing in as much as I expected each tick. Which means that he is struggling for troops in general. Uh, due to Press John actually getting some like decent value. Interesting. In the middle, Panzergrenfuhrer. Or the, like, the Panzergren, sorry. Uh, these need to uh, like basically start firing ASAP. Uh, but it looks like... Maybe the Panzergrens are going to be allowed to get into position? Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> Fuck off 190 comes in with the rockets and pins them both down. Stops that pushing its tracks. Things very, very slow. Panther A, Panther D, Panther A on the bottom side. 251.10, you got all this infantry. Neither player really wanting to overextend. I think Zizi's kind of happy to just sit on the 13 to 11 for now. Try and prevent any more push into the town. You can see he's deployed all of this infantry defensively. 251 two half tracks. Getting the mortifier down onto the pack 40. Not going to do too much damage to that. Now these Panzerguns getting in the face of the Panzerguns of Panzerfaust, though. They are surrendered. In no time at all. I think at this point, Presta Johnny really just needs to go for it, and it, it looks like most of his front is starting to move. He's getting the back move orders on his Panther D, so they move into position. He is going to hit a massive wall of Panzergrens, though. But ZZ just kind of been building up. These three pushing across the open makes it 14 to 10. Won't increase the ticket, though. For ZZ. ZZ's going to need a 15 to 9 if he wants a double tick. Which would probably require him to take either this town objective or maybe this objective on the bottom side, potentially. But every engagement coming down to just pure numbers right now. And whilst these two Panzergrens were pinned by that Fokker Wolf strike, they do outnumber the Panzergrens there. They could go up the hill and take the flag. In the open, that's an easy flag to take. That could swing things completely back in Presta John's favor. These Panzergrens, they're not utilizing cover right now. 
Bit of a mistake there from Presta John. If you could get these into the buildings. I mean, this one needs to stay still because otherwise it's just going to die. But this one could certainly jump into this building at least. Or this pans are going to move forwards and that one move up. Because allowing these to be engaged in the open just makes them take so much more damage. So many more men die unnecessarily. And there goes the Panzergren. That's going to give back Presta John his point in the center. 13 to 11 now. Can Presta John make it happen? The Flak 43 is going to be pretty deadly for these Panzergrens. But at the same time, the Panzergrens could kill this very quickly. Already down to three health. Second squad's going to engage with 70 42s. Back 43 is gone. Nicely done there by Presta John. Pushes it back to 12 to 12. Bock Wolf 190 from ZZ. Actually used to rocket the Panzergrens. ZZ trying to cut down on Presta John's infantry availability. Or oh, these Panzergrens bumping into two Panther D's. Nothing they can do. No Panzerfaust to hand. ZZ's going to wish he. Pushed up with this Panzergram with Panzerfaust. Although he has revealed those two Panther Ds, so maybe he can uh, do something with his Fock Wolves or something. Anyway, ZZ just gonna stop that Panzergram push in its tracks, bring in multiple of his own Panzergrams, and from here will likely just push toward the flag in the center of the open area and. Yeah, just clean those up so the Presta John doesn't control the hill. Now, 2 minutes and 30 seconds left until Presta John loses the game. Really got to get a move on if he wants to bring this back in his favour. And I think there are opportunities, maybe on the top side more than anywhere else. But I think ZZ is certainly sitting in a better position and has decided to just chill <laughs> on the 13 to 11 for a very long time. Now it's 14 to 10. Taking the flags where he can. But yeah, look at the abundance of armor on the top side. So Panther A, Panther A, Panther A on the hill, Panther A here. There's a, a bunch of half tracks. He's got the infantry in position. Presta John could certainly make an all out push just to try and grab these two flags on the top. That's certainly a place where he could uh, make a bit of a difference in this game if he wants to stay in it. HE 111 though, coming in for the bombing strike. Did it get the bomb off? Not sure it did. HE 111 gets shot down by the two SDK of Z71s. Let's see what happens here. It's at this kind of point where you'd select all of your units and just do an attack move. <laughs> That's what I always love to do at the end of these sorts of games, where they drag out for a very long time. Uh, you're so close to losing. You may as well. And just throw everything you got and see how it how it goes. Maybe not in the positions where you're weaker, like on the bottom side, but certainly on the top side. Rock Wolf 190 coming in for the rocket strike onto the Panther A. CK Z71, it's reloading. Might actually get the kill this time around. Or oh, close, but not quite. Yeah. I think Presta John's lack of initiative throughout this game might have just cost him. He's going to end up bumping into these pack 40s. Panzergrens are going to stop, but he's only got 30 seconds to capture two flags. So he's got the Panther A now fast moving to the center. He's got the SDK of Z71 just charging up the hill. He's left it just a little bit too late. 12, 11, 10, 9. <laughs> it's close. It's close. He could certainly capture these flags. But he doesn't have time. And that's going to be game over. ZZ takes the victory. 2-0 to ZZ. ZZ moves on to the semi-finals and commiserations to Presta John. For uh, losing out this time around. I think he gave it a good go in this game for sure. And he definitely had the advantage in the early game. He just failed to capitalize on it. I think Presta John made fantastic plays uh, throughout this game with his mortars, you know, utilizing a weak uh, armor and killing it with mortars. Like, that's something that 
experienced players do and and he is certainly very very good at the game but he just i think in terms of strategy he just failed to take advantage of his lead and you can see that by the kills and losses 7140 kills to 5795 losses uh, Presser John certainly had a massive kill advantage and keeping track of that is super important in games like this so that you know how far ahead you are and yeah it's just such it's just really unfortunate to see uh but ZZ <laughs> took what he could get I mean fantastic comeback from ZZ um really made some strong micro play and also just capitalized on Presser John's lack of aggression and then just stabilized himself and just sat there and waited till the end of the game, which I think is fair enough when you're coming back from such a deficit. You know, you get yourself into a solid position and then you play defensively. That's basically, I think, what ZZ had in mind. So in terms of kills, um, not a massive fan of these Jagdpanzer SU-76s, uh, but interesting to see them used at least. Uh, I guess maybe with two star veterancy and a bunch of supply trucks nearby, you could get quite a lot of kills in an open range engagement versus infantry. But other than that, like the way he brought them in to back up the town was a bit odd. Um, Panther A's though, <laughs> I mean, they're just going to be trading one for one mostly. Um, and if not, then it's probably because of Fock Wolf 190 killed them. Uh, Fock Wolf uh, 190 F8 there killing the HE 111 and the Panther D. Uh, the Panzer Blitz actually weren't as prevalent as I imagined they would be. I think uh, Presser John had a card of the JU-88s in Phase A, like the strafing ones, and then he had the HE-111s in Phase C alongside some Panzer Blitz, maybe. Or he had like two cards of the Focke Wolf 190 with the Panzer Blitz in Phase B, not sure. Anyway, he had four of them, um, whilst I think ZZ also maybe had four. Not entirely sure. Anyway, losses. This Jagdpanzer did very well. And this is basically why I love the Jagdpanzers. Um, the Jagdpanzers kind of trump everything that isn't a panther or a tiger. Or if you're facing Soviets, um, anything that isn't an IS-2, basically. <laughs> like, Jagdpanzers can be really, really strong. And so seeing people in this match in particular rely on, like, Stuks was a bit odd, in my opinion. But then again, I'm not a professional 1v1 player, so who knows? Uh, maybe Jagdpanzer is just a little bit too expensive. But I'm pretty sure Stugs are pretty, the Stug 4s especially are, are quite expensive as well. Nice job by this Panther Aphiota. I think this was the one that dodged the uh, the rocket strike on the bottom side. Got some decent value. Uh, Presser John, great use of the mortars, of course. Uh, you can see this mortar, 251 2. Took out a Panther D, Panther A, Panther A, Stug 4. <laughs> That's a good old mortar. That's a fantastic value coming out of the mortar there. <laughs> Damn. Um, the HE-111 bombing strikes on the bottom side uh, did help him secure that flag for the longest time. So good job there as well from Presser John. But again, not capitalizing soon enough on his lead, um, both at the beginning of the game and also at the end. So that's going to leave it in ZZ's hands. Moving on to the semi-final to play again or to play off against Gonzo. This has been a hell of a long video. I'm going to have to give my my voice a lovely rest after this one. But <laughs> hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.